Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm so excited to be with you again tonight. My God, look at God. He has brought us to the end of one year. As we get ready to approach the next year, I want you to please pay attention to what I have to say. I would have loved to spend some time to say hello here and there, but there is no time for that tonight. This is the time for the word, and I want to do just that. So please pay attention because the extent to which you will receive what God wants to do in 2024 is largely dependent on the teaching that precedes the announcement of the word for the year. So it's very important that you pay all the attention you can now because that is what's going to mark you out and mark you different from anybody who just receives the word on the street. It's the teaching that precedes the word. That is the key. So pay attention tonight. All right. We are getting ready to enter into 2024. For. But before I give you that, I want to give you the preceding um, something that transpired in 2019. The Lord instructed me as we were approaching the year 2020, the Lord uh, led me to write, and the book is titled Word War, W O R D W A R, Word War. And the subtitle is The Battle of the Voices. The Battle of the Voices. Every Hebrew alphabet comes with a pictorial representation. And in the year 2020, the Hebrew alphabet that represents the year 2020 is actually a picture of an open mouth. And the Lord said to me that the picture of the open mouth doesn't just represent 2020. It represents, it only starts, it only begins in 2020 and is going to run through for another decade. For 10 solid years, that is going to be the major move of God in the next 10 years, beginning from the year 2020, and God is going to be moving largely through the mouth, hallelujah, through the open mouth. And in that little book, I did a teaching on the power of the mouth. And in this decade, from 2020 to 2030, in this decade, we are going to begin to experience uh, lots of voices, lots of voices, voices that will be clashing with each other, voices, and today we already see it going on, never in the history of the world have we seen or heard clashes of voices all over the world. Get on the internet, you will see clashes of voices. In the kingdom of God, clashes of voices. One person says this, another says that. The authority here is fighting against this. And some preacher says this, another preacher says this. And people are fighting all over. There is a clash of voices, doctrinal voices. People are clashing in doctrines, clashing in teachings, clashing in all kinds of stuff in the world today. And it's largely started... It blew up in 2020. From 2020 to 2030, we will keep experiencing it. Because the Lord told me in the decade of the pay in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew alphabet, pay is the picture of the open mouth. Within this, this 10 year period, the mouth is going to be in the forefront. So that's why today those who will be promoted and lifted in the next 10 years are those who have come to know how to use their mouth. Hallelujah. Those who have come to know how to use their tongue, to know how to use their mouth. In this decade, this is your decade. Hallelujah. But within the decade, every year has its own symbolism. Okay? In the year 2024, in the Hebrew alphabet, the representation, the pictorial representation for the year 2024 in the Hebrew alphabet, amazingly, is the door. Is the door. 
And I'm sure when you go out of this place today, you're going to hear a lot of people say, is the year of the open door, is the year of the open door. When I was doing my studies and I saw the open door as the pictorial representation of the year 2024, as a matter of fact, the number of the Hebrew the, the Hebrew number for 2024 is actually 5784, 5784. So the year 5784 in uh, for the Jew is the year 2024 for the Gregorian calendar, which is the calendar that we run by. Now, I need you to follow me closely. The year 2024 or the year 5784. We are now in the 80s in the Hebrew calendar. 80s in the 80s. The decade of the 80s in the Hebrew calendar is the decade of the 20s in the Gregorian calendar that we are running with. Now the decade um, um, of the Hebrew calendar, which is the 80s, is the decade of the mouth or the pay. All right. But the 2024, so we are in the four now. Four represents the door. That is the pictorial representation. That's why I said, when you get out today, you'll be hearing a lot of people say that uh, it's the year of the open door. But listen, that comes by studies. But while I was studying this, I had to go into prayer to begin to ask the Lord for this year. What does it mean to us? What are you saying to us as the Maker's Church? Hallelujah. Now, there is a specific message given to the generality of the people, to the nations, and to the kingdom of God. But there is also the word given to the church, the local church. Now, what is the word that the Lord has given us for 2024? Because that is what we will run with. You can, it's easy for anybody to say it's the year of the open door. What? is the open door about what particular open door is the lord opening to you because if a door opens that door is opening you onto something so where where is that door leading to that's what i really wanted to know so i took time to go before the lord in prayer and in fasting and i said lord what are you saying to us i know it's the year of the open door okay um, if we follow the calendar, uh, as in, in the 80, 80s of the um, uh, of the Hebrew calendar, all right? So we are in 2024. What are you saying for the Maker's Church? What are you saying for us? What are you saying for the Mighty Miracles Movement? What are you saying for us, Lord? And the Lord began to speak to me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Lord began to speak to me. Hallelujah. So uh, that's exactly what I want to share with us briefly tonight. As I was seeking the face of the Lord in prayers, as I was praying, I fell into a trance. And in that trance, I saw, I saw a gate. I saw a huge gate that was open. But though the gate was open, there was somebody standing by the gate. The person was not visible initially. As I moved closer to the gate, the visibility of that personality started becoming more real to me. More real to me. And the moment I got close, the man at the gate stretched forth his hand and gave me a slip. It's like a card. And that card is like the entry card. Once I received the card from him, the gate just flung open. And I knew immediately I was supposed to access that gate. And I knew exactly what I was accessing and where I was going into. And while I came out of that encounter, this was what I saw. I saw the scripture in that encounter. I woke up with it. And this was the scripture. First Chronicles chapter 9 and verse 21. It says, Zechariah, the son of Meshilimiah, was gatekeeper at the entrance of the tent of meeting. I said, Lord, what is this? And God said, what you saw in the vision, that man that you saw that gave you access, that man is the gatekeeper. Because I'm going to be working paripasu gatekeepers 
for what I'm about to do in 2024. Hey, my God, I got so excited and so interested. So I started meditating on this scripture and I found out that the name Zechariah means Yahweh remembers me. My God. And then I did this research on Meshilimaya. Meshilimaya means an ally of Yahweh. This is quite interesting. Yahweh is the covenant keeping name, is the covenant name of God. It is called the mysterious tetragrammaton. And what that means is your he wa he, like y h w h. This was how the Jewish people spelt the name of Yahweh. The reason it's because it was a sacred name, too sacred for their lips to pronounce. So they decided to spell it in a way that it cannot be pronounced by anybody. Hallelujah. So it became Y W Y H W H Yod He Wa He. And that is the alphabets. In the Hebrew language. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, so yod heh was how they represented his name. Because the name was too holy to be pronounced by the Jew. So what they did every time, they, when, even when they were writing the scriptures, the scribes had several pens. Um, that they would write the scriptures with. As they are writing, when they get to any place where the name of God needs to be written, they will drop the pen and take up a new pen and write yod he wa he and keep that pen away, never to be used again. And then they will pick another pen and continue writing the scriptures. And when they get to another point where they need to write the name of God, they will drop that pen, pick a new one, and write your he wa he, and keep it aside, never to be used again. And the reason is, you cannot use a pen you have used to write the name of God to write anything else. That was how much they reverenced the name of Yahweh. Glory to God. That's why even all the prophets, that most of the prophets and most of the names you see in the Bible who walked with God, they took a part of his name, the Yah. It's either called Yah or, or Ye or, or, um, or Jah. When you see Jah, you see Yah. It's a short form of Yahweh because it cannot be pronounced fully. So they call it, that's why when you hear, when you hear um, Isaiah, or Jeremiah, or um, or Hallelujah, glory to God. You see, when you hear all those things, even the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you hear Yeshua, it's the Yah. It's coming from from Yahweh. Glory to God. Glory to God. So that name is the covenant name of God. And when God had a covenant with Abraham, that was the name he used. Glory to God. So every time you see in the scriptures, they, they write the Lord. It's not Lord. It's actually Yahweh. They're just exchanging it. Jehovah is the Aramaic rendition of Yahweh, which has been adopted in, in the English language. So when we hear Jehovah, the original name is Yahweh. Hallelujah. And even the Latin calls him Dominus. They call him Lord. They exchanged the Yahweh for Lord. So every time you see Lord in the scriptures, he's referring to Yahweh himself. Now, it is the covenant name of God. And what was the covenant he established with Abraham? He says, I will establish in Genesis chapter 17, verse 2. He says, I will establish my covenant, everlasting promise between me and you. And I will multiply you exceedingly through your descendants. Genesis 17 verse 2. He said, I will multiply you exceedingly through your descendants. This is quite interesting because, because um, the Lord began to cause me to look beyond the gate and look at the gatekeeper. And the Lord says, 
So many people are going to miss out on what he wants to do, celebrating the gate without having the pass. Because you cannot access the gate if the gatekeeper doesn't give you a pass. My God, my Because the gatekeeper becomes the, the, the major ministry that is going to be mostly impactful in the 2024. Now let's go back to our scriptures. In 1 Chronicles chapter 9 and verse 21, it says, Zechariah, which means Yahweh remembers me. Okay? The son of Meshelimiah. Meshelimiah means an ally of Yahweh. Was the gatekeeper at the entrance of the tent of the meeting. So what is the Lord trying to say in this particular scripture? What is God trying to say? God is saying there is the need for an ally who would work with the promise keeper to make sure that the meeting happens on the day of remembrance. Because you cannot access the promise without meeting with the promise keeper. So there is the necessity for uh, an ally who will work who will work with the promise keeper to enable this meeting and that ally becomes the gatekeeper. And God says there will be the rise of gatekeepers in the year 2024. The gatekeepers, hallelujah. As a matter of fact, like I said, in the Hebrew calendar, we are in the year 84. All right, 5784 which is actually 2024. So we are in the 84s in the Hebrew calendar. And as I checked, I found out that in Psalm 84, if you read verses 10 and 11 in Psalm 84, it says, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper. It is the same word used for doorkeeper that is used for gatekeeper. I would rather be a doorkeeper or a gatekeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. God is set to do good things. Hallelujah. To manifest a certain dimension of his glory, which we saw in the covenant name as the time as the as the glory of multiplication hallelujah and god is set to do this in the year 2024 but that will not happen unless it is facilitated by gatekeepers so who is a gatekeeper one who controls the flow of traffic in and out of a gateway that is a gatekeeper hallelujah Someone who guards an entrance is a gatekeeper. There are gatekeepers for cities, there are gatekeepers for palaces, and there are gatekeepers for temples. The temple represents the body of Christ. The palaces represent politics and, and the places of power and authority in our day. All right. And then when we talk about cities, it represents cities and countries and nations because you cannot even access any nation without going through the gateway of, of, of a city. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we see that the gatekeepers are the most important ministry that we need to enjoy and engage in the year 2024 for us to be able to gain access into the blessing that God wants to bring. And the blessing or the promise that God is bringing in 2024 is the covenant blessing or the promise of multiplication. In 1 Chronicles chapter 9 and verse 22, the Bible says all these were chosen as gatekeepers at the thresholds. The threshold means entrance. These were chosen as gatekeepers at the thresholds. 
these that were chosen were 212. They were enrolled by genealogies in their villages. David and Samuel, the seer, established them in their office of trust. That means for anyone who is going to be chosen and appointed in 2024 to be a gatekeeper is going to be based on trust. You have to give God reason to trust you so he can entrust in your hand the keys to man his gates. Hallelujah. What is the promise that we are expecting in the year 2024? You will find it in the fourth miracle because this is 2024, the year 5784 in the, in the, in the Hebrew. This is, we are in the fours, right? You know what it means? The fourth miracle of Jesus in the Bible is the multiplication of bread and fish because the covenant promise unto Abraham is multiplication. Hallelujah. And so God is reintroducing us to his covenant name when he gave us that scripture. Glory to God. So the first time that the blessing was pronounced by God in the Bible, you'll find it in Genesis the first time was when God was pronouncing the blessing over the fish of the sea. God blessed the fish and commanded them to multiply. Hallelujah. So we see that what we are expecting is multiplication. But how can we access it? It's going to be via the instrumentality of gatekeepers. And this is why it's so important to understand who the gatekeepers are and how to harness and collaborate with the gatekeepers because the gatekeepers, from our understanding from this teaching, are actually supposed to be allies of Yahweh. Glory to God. In order to bring to pass the promises of Yahweh in our lives in 2024. Glory to God. So why would God choose the fourth miracle to be the miracle of multiplication? Because God knows the end from the beginning. God knew 2024 was coming and he already set it in motion. This is a prophetic agenda of God for this time, for right now, and for the Maker's Church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So when you look at what he multiplied, he multiplied bread and fish. These two items are very significant and prophetic because if we look at the adumbrations in the Old Testament, in the day of Moses, when they were in the wilderness, the Bible says the people complained about two things. They said, we are tired. We, when are we going to have flesh to eat? They said, we remember the fish we used to eat, that we used to fry with garlic and onion. We remember the fish. We don't have it anymore. And they also complained about the bread. They said they were tired of that kind of bread. So they wanted something new and something fresh. So Jesus over here in the New Testament took them over to another wilderness. While they were in the desert for three days, the Lord Jesus decided to multiply the fish and the bread. So he combined both the fish they were looking for and the bread they had in order to, to showcase that he was the final answer to everything that you would ever need. And there will be no reason for you to look back or to try to backslide to Egypt in the year 2024 because God is making provision, oh my God, for everything you will ever desire. The bread represents provision. The bread represents finance. The bread represents substance. That's why he says, give us this day our daily bread. The bread covers your needs. But listen, the fish represents souls. And that is what God wants to multiply. My God. Because the fish is always associated with multiplication and is also associated with souls. So Jesus said to the disciples, I will make you fishers of men. As the maker's church, you and I know in Matthew 4 verse 19, that is our key scripture and the foundation scripture for the maker's church. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Glory to God. I will make you fishers of men because fish is the 
representation of men and souls in the word of God. So God is saying to us that I'm going to multiply, I'm going to multiply your bread and your fish. In other words, increase, expansion, multiplication is coming financially and multiplication is coming for souls. Souls are going to be saved. Many people will be added to the church. The Bible says, and so many were added to the church as should be saved. Expect multiplication for the maker's church for souls to be saved and added to the kingdom of God in the year 2024. Somebody shout hallelujah. Give him two hallelujahs in the house tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And if you calculate five plus two is seven. Five loaves and two fish is seven. And that's very significant. Seven is not just only uh, representing uh, God, like the seven is the number of perfection and seven is the number of God. We all know that. But seven is also the number of trust. Seven is also the number of trust. Because the people that will become, the people that will be positioned as the gatekeepers and those that will enjoy the ministry of the gatekeepers in 2024, that it has to be delegated on trust. You cannot put anybody at the gate that you don't trust. Hallelujah. So trust is a key aspect of positioning in 2024. So seven is the number of trust. Remember when God was going to fulfill his promise for Israel, when he was going to get them into the promise, they had to go through a city and the city walls prevented them. And that was Jericho. So what did God do? God said to them, march around the city for seven days. And then on the seventh day, march seven times. And say nothing. But on the seventh day, lift your voice and lift a shout. Hallelujah. And when they did that on the seventh day and marched around seven times and lifted up the shout, the Bible says, and the walls came crumbling down. Because in 2024, as you put your trust in God, seven is the number of trust. God was saying, stop looking to the promise, look to me. Glory to God. Once you shift your eyes off of the promise and put your focus on God in total trust, God says, I will cause the walls to fall down and I will bring you and give you access into the promise. Glory to God. So what you need is me. Glory to God. You need the covenant keeping God. You need to look for the promise keeper in the year 2024. So I'm going to quickly just highlight the four because we're in the force and there are four different um, kinds of gatekeepers to expect in the year 2024. The number one gatekeeper to look out for in the year 2024 are the Josephs. Joseph, Joseph is a gatekeeper for the city of Goshen. Joseph was the reason that the children of Israel had access into Goshen, the place of safety, the place of light or the lighted house, the place where God's presence was covering them and protecting them and providing for them. Everybody didn't have access to Goshen. Why? Because there was a gatekeeper. It was meant only for the children of Israel. Hallelujah. So Joseph was the one who was the custodian of that gate. God is going to be raising Josephs among us. And God is going to be connecting some of us to Josephs. Hallelujah. People who will open gates for us to be able to access what God has for us in 2024. And the truth is what God is going to be doing when it comes to the Joseph, Joseph is the custodian of souls. Joseph said, you meant it for evil, but God sent me ahead for in order to save souls, in order to save nations. Hallelujah. Listen, multitudes are coming in by the grace of God. God is bringing multitudes to the house and God is going to be raising Josephs who are going to welcome them.
Hallelujah. Joseph's who are going to, who are going to go about winning souls. God is going to be raising soul winners. Glory to God. In the year 2024, the Bible says in Hosea 11, 11, they shall tremble as a bird out of Egypt and as a dove out of the land of Assyria. And I will place them in their houses, saith the Lord. There are people who belong to this house. There are people who belong to the maker's church, but they are scattered everywhere. They are going through all kinds of stuff. But God is going to connect them to the house through the Josephs. God is going to give them access to the house through the Joseph. Souls are coming in and Josephs are rising in the house. In, who are, these are the soul winners. These are the soul winners. And as you position yourself to be a Joseph in the house, to be a soul winner in the house, the Lord's covenant is going to be established in your life like never before. The promises of God concerning you will come to pass in the name of Jesus. The Josephs control the gate of souls. That means if souls will be saved, if souls will come into the church, if souls will remain in the church, or souls will be driven out of the church, it's going to be dependent on the Josephs. So make sure you are a real Joseph that brings souls in and you are not sending souls out. Hallelujah. Because God is entrusting his kingdom keys into your hand as a janitor of souls in 2024. And when you when you comply with God, when you become an ally with God as a gatekeeper of souls, you will be amazed what God is going to be doing for you. He's going to remember you in the year 2024. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The second, the second uh, gatekeepers that we are expecting in the year 2024 that God is going to be raising, the second gatekeepers, these are the Job's. These are the Job's. These are the custodians of finances. These are people with financial acumen that God is going to be giving them ideas that will bring birth to money. They are going to be people who are going to facilitate finance into the kingdom. God positions people based on trust and he will not trust you if he doesn't know the condition of your heart because it's about the condition of the heart there are those in the house of god who are saying lord i want to give i want to do more i want to be a blessing to souls i want to be a blessing to your kingdom and to your work but lord i need money i need to know give me ideas give me strategies this is your year i said if that is you this is your year if your agenda meets with god's agenda that means you are making yourself an ally with God. My God. And when you make yourself an ally with God in order to usher in what God is promising for the year 2024, because multiplication cannot happen without 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 finance multiplication will not happen without finance without prosperity of the church god says i am going to empower people financially in the year 2024 maybe that's you you need to receive that right now give god two hallelujahs in the house right now glory to god hallelujah the jobs are in the house you remember the bible tells us about job that job was the richest in all of the east that anointing is being released in the house. In Job 29 verse, verse, uh, verses 7 to 25, that's a long read. When you leave here, go home and read it. You'll be amazed how powerful Job was. Job said there was a time when he sat, he put, he made his, he, he made his office chair to be at the gates of the city. In other words, he was the gatekeeper of the city. He said, when I was the gatekeeper of the city, he says, I was able to do ministry like never before. I was able to help the widow. I was able to help the poor. I was feet to the lame. I was eyes to the blind. The, he was, and you need to see, listen, you need to get back home and read Job 29 from the beginning to the end. You will be amazed. Or you read from verse 7 to verse 25. You will be amazed how powerful it is to be a gatekeeper of finance. Because money makes things work. The Bible says that money answereth to all things. Glory to God. So God wants to take his work to another level. He wants to take his people to another level. 
Somebody who says you don't have to be rich does not have plans to help anybody. If you truly have the heart of God, you will want to be a blessing to many people. And in order to do that, you have to have money. And this is the year for such people who have desires to be a blessing to the work of God, a blessing to the kingdom of God, so that souls can be impacted all over the world. This is your year. Glory to God. Job's God is getting ready for you in 2024. So position yourself rightly because it comes when God can entrust you. When God trusts you, then he can entrust you with his money. Hallelujah. So how are you handling the little one he has put in your hands? It's going to largely determine if God is going to put much money in your hands in 2024 because it's going to be based on trust. A gatekeeper is positioned based on trust. Second Kings chapter 22 verse 4 says, Go up to Hilkiah the high priest, that he may count the money that has been brought unto the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the threshold have collected from the people. Because there are people in the house of God that God is going to anoint on how to collect money. They will be anointed to know how to collect money from the streets, collect money in the business place, collect money. They're going to know, in other words, they're going to know how to make money. And when they make money, the Bible says one of their priorities will be to bring it to the priest so that the priest can do the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. So that the multitudes can be won and souls can be saved. Glory to God. So the second gatekeepers are the jobs. These are the custodians of finances. Heaven is going to be unleashing ideas and giving you opportunities to make money in the year 2024. Glory to God. So if your desire is to be an ally with God, then expect, expect the covenant keeper to show up in your life in 2024. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Number three, let me, let me, be, let me be faster now. Number three, the third gatekeepers to look out for uh, uh, are, the, are the Peters. Glory to God. Peters. You remember there was a time when the Bible says, uh, Jesus said, who do men say that I am? And nobody else could respond but Peter. All of them were saying um, that some say you are John the Baptist, some say you are Elijah, some said you are this or that. He said, "You, who do you say I am? And then it was Peter who was bold enough to stand up. He said, you think I don't know? I know who you are. You are Jesus. You are the son of the living God. And Jesus was amazed. He said, oh, wow. Let me tell you, you didn't get this from Google. You didn't get this from anybody. You got this from the Holy Spirit. You got this from my Father in heaven. My Father in heaven must have revealed this to you. So you are Peter, but on this rock, what is the rock? This revelation. What is the rock? This revelation. My God. On this revelation, he says, I will build my church. On this revelation, I will build my church. He says, from today, Peter, I give you, I make you a custodian. I give give you the keys. I make you the gatekeeper of revelations. My God, the gatekeeper of revelations. In 2024, God is going to be given revelations. The owners of 2024, the gatekeepers of 2024 are going to be people that have access to the Father. Access to the Father. How do you know somebody who has access to God? Listen, it's not by most of the manifestations and all the drama we watch around today. So many people are just doing gimmicks and games and they think and they're deceiving so many. Listen, scripturally, if you want to know somebody that has access to God and has access to the Father, check out their depths of revelation. Their revelation of God. Hallelujah. I said their revelation of God. There are depths of revelation of the things of the spirit. That's how you know someone that has access to the father. Jesus says, my father revealed this to you. And because of that, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Wait, listen to what our Lord Jesus said. He says, he says, I no longer call you servants. I now call you friends because a servant does not know. The things of his master, the secrets of his master. 
No. He says, but I show you because you have become friends. Hallelujah. A servant can work for the master, but friends fellowships with the master. How do you know people who have relationship with God? It's by their depth of revelation of God, by the secrets of heaven that they have access to. These are custodians of the revelations of God. And these are the people to whom 2024 belongs. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So our Lord said to Peter, I give unto you the keys. In other words, from this day, I make you the gatekeeper of revelations. Hallelujah. There are some things you will never know until you hear it from some people because they have access. They have the key. And, and this year, make that your desire. Lord, I want to be a custodian of your revelations. My God. Nanda Rada Kosi and Talabaha. And if you're going to listen to any preacher, any teacher, any person who does not have depths about God, those are not the people to listen to in this year, 2024. All you need, because all you want to know, you want to know God. You want to know God. You want to know God. Not see, Listen, it's good to listen to marriage, people who are teaching on marriage, people who are teaching on, uh, what do you call it now, uh, on how to make money. It's good to listen to all those things, but listen to me. Listen to me. If you know God, <laughs> if you know God, the Bible says, they that know their God, they shall do exploits. They shall be strong and they shall do exploits. When you know God, all right, when you know God, when you really know God, money will answer to you. When you truly know God, life will respond to you. When you truly know God, your, your, your relationships will be well. The Bible says when a man's ways please the Lord, even his enemies will be at peace with him. So if your enemies can be at peace with you because of your level of relationship with God, how much more your wife or your husband who is not your enemy? Hallelujah. Listen to me. You can't, you can oh my god mando resoto let's leave that because i don't want to spend too much time there number four number four number four number four number four the number four gatekeeper that we're expecting that god is going to do and bring forth and establish in the year 2024 are the deborahs these are the deborahs these are gatekeepers of authority whether it has to do with politics or has to do with financial power, economic power, or it has to do with uh, spiritual authority. Okay. These are the people that God is going to establish. These are the people that God, that we open the doors for 2024's blessing to reach God's people. Hallelujah. So it's either you are positioned as one of them or you are connected to one of them so they can open the door to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. These are the Deborahs. The Bible says, and Deborah arose a mother in Israel and he challenged the men and took them and they took power. They took the battle to the gate. Glory to God. Because at that moment, she was the gatekeeper. And the Bible says she was able to raise men and women who went to war, who went to war and won the war. You see, the Deborahs, they are mothers of leadership. They are not intimidated by new leadership. They are not intimidated. They raise bold leaders, people who will rise up. It doesn't matter whether it's in the economy or in, the, in politics or in, in the kingdom of God. Leadership, new sets of leadership, bold people who are filled with the boldness of the Holy Spirit are going to begin to rise in the year 2024. Hallelujah. And God is going to position gatekeepers to encourage them. Gatekeepers like Deborah, a woman, hallelujah, who became a mother to leaders. Glory to God. God is going to use people like Mordecai uh, to become fathers of the Esthers who will rise up in our generation. Glory to God. <laughs> Uh, Mordecai who are not intimidated by the Esthers and they are willing to push the Esthers to where God wants them to be and challenge them to what God wants them to do until the Esthers will pick up sense and pick up faith and become bold enough to stand up and say I will go before the palace I will 
confront authorities and will go before powers. It doesn't matter what the enemy says. It doesn't matter the threat and the intimidation. If I perish, I perish. Oh my God. God is raising bold leaders in our generation. Get ready. New sets of leadership are rising who are bold and they are not afraid of what their fathers used to be afraid of. Hallelujah. These are the people that will lead the church into the next level. These are the people that will drive the body of Christ to the next level. Glory to God. Fearless leadership in the name of Jesus. People of God, rise up. Rise up to this occasion. God is calling us. It's a clarion call to rise and not be intimidated anymore and not be afraid. It's time to get out there and lead our generation. Lead our families. Lead our children. Lead in the name of Jesus. The gatekeepers of souls and the gatekeeper of resources. Hallelujah. This is the year that they will begin to rise. If I were you, I will position myself to be one of them because our God is not a God of favoritisms. No, God will position people based on trust. If he can trust you, he will entrust his key into your hands. Just like he gave Peter the key, God is going to give you keys. Glory to God. Based on where your heart is and based on what he's doing in the year 2024. You just listen to the four kinds of gatekeepers. Where do you belong? Glory to God. And if you don't belong anywhere, start trying to identify right now. That is why the word of God comes. So to give you clarity, so you can know where to fit in. Glory to God. All right. So you know who to identify with. You know who to connect with in order to gain access. You need the gatekeepers in your life. Anyone who has the key to where God needs to take you in 2024, that is your gatekeeper. This year, God is going to connect you with your gatekeeper because that gatekeeper is an ally of God in 2024 to bring to pass the promises of God. And one of the promises is multiplication. Whether it's in your business, in your finance, even in the ministry, multiplication is the agenda of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And as I close this session, I want to close with this story in the Gospel of Luke chapter 2, verses 36 to 38. The Bible says, And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in at that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and speak of him to all them that looked for the redemption of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. This is quite interesting. The reason is, I'll give you um, the preamble to this. The Bible tells us that the people, Jerusalem was looking for redemption. They were waiting for their salvation. The promises have come. You see, the prophets have prophesied and they were expecting God to, to fulfill his promise. The Bible says there was a man called Simon or Simeon. This man was an old man and he was praying and waiting. The Bible says he refused to die. God promised him again and told him, don't worry, you will not die until you see the redemption with your eyes, until you touch the redemption with your hands, until you see the salvation, until the promise comes to pass, you will not see death. And the man kept praying. Good news. The Bible says, and Jesus was born. And when Jesus was born, they decided on a certain day to take him to the temple. And on that same day, Simon happened to be led by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Holy Ghost came upon him and directed him to the temple. And he met with Jesus, with Jesus' parents. When he saw the baby, he was excited. He recognized him and carried the baby and began to prophesy and began to speak blessings upon the child. 
And one of the things he was saying, he was thanking God. He says, Lord, I thank you because my eyes have seen the redemption. My eyes have seen the salvation and my hands have touched the salvation of Jerusalem. He says, now your servant can go to bed. Now I am ready to die. And the Bible says that same moment, there was a woman in the temple who has also been waiting and praying. She was a widow. She was married for seven years. Remember, seven is the number of trust that we've been talking about. She was married for seven years. After that seven years, the Bible says she stayed in the house of God and in the temple praying for the redemption in other words God made her a gatekeeper looking forward to the redemption of Israel after seven years because seven is the number of trust God entrusted the key of the promise into her hand and this woman stayed in the temple and was praying and was waiting and on that day day the baby Jesus was brought in and she rejoiced and said she has also witnessed with her own eyes the salvation of Israel. Oh, this is good news because as an adumbration in the Old Testament, this is a prophetic sign. As an adumbration in the Old Testament, there are only two Hannah's in the Bible. This woman happened to be called Hannah. The other Hannah in the Bible was the wife of Elkanah. Both of them happened to be waiting on God for something, for promise. One was waiting for God for a promised baby. The other one was waiting for God for a promised baby that will be the salvation of Israel. Oh my God. Now listen, the first Hannah in the Old Testament was believing God and what one day she went into the temple the Hannah in the New Testament in the gospel the Hannah we see there was in the temple and the Bible says why this Hannah was praying in the Old Testament was praying to God the priest came up to her the priest was the gatekeeper of the temple. The priest came up to her and said, what do you want? When the priest and this woman met, there was an encounter. That was the day that the word was released that today you receive what you are crying for. Hallelujah. The gatekeeper Hannah in the New Testament met with the baby Jesus, with the mother of Jesus, and that day was the day of the fulfillment of the promise of God. My God, the woman in the Old Testament, Hannah, was asking God, she said, Lord, give me this baby, not for myself, because I know that you are looking for a prophet. The Bible says the word of the Lord was cast in the land. That means God's word, God's presence was missing in the land. They needed the presence of God. And this woman says, if you give me this child, I will give him back to you because this child will represent your presence in the midst of the people. He will represent the salvation of the people. Have you ever thought of the reason why the Bible tells us that none of the word of of, of Samuel fell to the ground. That baby was Samuel. None of his word fell to the ground because God is trying to show us through types and shadows that Samuel was not just a prophet like any other. He represented God in the midst of his people because the word of God is the only thing that never fails. The word of God is the only thing that never falls to the ground. And the Bible says it is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. So we see that that word in person called Jesus brought into the temple and Hannah welcomed the baby in the New Testament. So the good news is Hannah did not just receive the promise, she received the promise keeper. My God, she welcomed the promise keeper. This is the good news for 2024. 
This is our scripture for the year 2024. Second Corinthians chapter one and verse 20. I'll read it from the amplified translation. It says, for as many as are the promises of God in Christ, they are all answered. Yes. So through him, we say our amen to the glory of God. In other words, when Hannah received the baby, she received more than the promises. She received the promise keeper. Good news. This is the announcement for the year 2024. Get ready for this. 2024 is the year of the promise keeper. Glory to God. And when he comes, expect multiplication. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you very soon. I am CMD Lamar and I approve this message.